Today, Chaos Esports Club needed a miracle to ensure they had the chance to fight another day in the European League. That is a miracle that they did not get. In order to stave off auto-relegation from the league, they needed a win over G2 in the EUL on October the 12th, and they weren't able to make it happen. Chaos will be relegated from the European League at the end of Stage 2. This comes after the team was unable to win any matches in Stage 1 of the EUL, only managing to tie five matches in the league's best of one withdraws format. They finished in dead last, both behind Team Secret and Team Empire as the only three teams that stage to finish with single digit points which is still a slightly relevant point, by the way. So, coming into Stage 2, the team knew they had to make changes. They dropped Red Groove and Shantae to make way for Secretly and Next One to come back onto the team and attempt to restructure before the stage began. I didn't think they would have much chance to avoid relegation, but there was still an opportunity for them to place higher than Secret or Empire. And then the stage began. Despite making roster moves, Secret shot up to second place through the first seven games, and Empire did considerably better as well, whereas Chaos lost, and tied, and lost again, similar to what they did in stage one. Then they beat Rogue, albeit a really handicapped Rogue, because Aces was still sitting out a multi-game suspension, then beat Virtus Pro the next week, and I was starting to wonder whether or not they may actually have a chance. Then they lost, and then lost again today. And now, they don't have any more chances left. That's it. The way relegation works for the EUL is two-pronged. 10th place is auto-relegated to European Challenger League for the next year's season, and is replaced by the current season winner, whereas 9th place plays a relegation game against the runner-up of EUCL to determine who gets it for next year. The point is, 9th place plays for a chance to keep their spot, 10th place doesn't. That's where Chaos sits, and that's what the difference is. Now, the stage isn't over yet. Chaos still have a few more games to play, and currently they aren't at the bottom of the league standings, so you might be asking yourself, how did they get relegated if we're not done yet? Results in Europe are tabulated over the course of a whole season. You take all of your stage placements into account before your results are finalized. Chaos placing last in stage one with just five points meant they needed a resurgence with a lot more wins to ensure they didn't get last across both stages but no other team performed as poorly as they did. And at this point, no one can do poorly enough that Chaos might get bumped into ninth place and not get auto-relegated. Sometimes there are things you just can't come back from. That's also just how the system works. I'm not going to say the format is perfect, but to be honest, if you're coming in dead last in a league with nine other teams, you kind of deserve to get the boot in my opinion. Auto-relegation does seem like a pretty archaic thing, right? You'd think we'd stopped using it for a good reason seasons ago, but... I guess it really just is what it is. This means the winner of EU Challenger League season that is currently ongoing will take over Chaos's place heading into 2021. At the European League Finals in November, we have the two CL finalists play one another, and the winner gets that spot. The team that loses that game then plays the ninth place team from EUL for their spot. We'll go into specifics on that event once we do predictions for it next month. Yes, I said predictions. Don't worry about it. Here's the thing, right? I was critical of Chaos when they made those roster moves before Stage 2. It was kind of born out of confusion, knowing that there was both free agent talent and currently benched players on other rosters that they could have brought in to help improve their team, but they went back to the well with two players that they had in their system before, and by the way, also didn't find a lot of success with. There wasn't immediate improvement, though they did improve, but when your backs are against the wall, you've got a really good org like Chaos supporting you, and you understand what's at stake, I think they needed to go for something bigger than they did. No disrespect to Next One or Secretly, but they came in at a time when Chaos needed to make a big impact instead of what I think they did and just experimented, honestly. But that's just my take. They tried. You can't say that they didn't. This team still can knock the socks off most other squads in Europe, just seemingly not at a T1 level. And it actually kind of sucks to see them leave. They've endured so many seasons, especially in Pro League, of just hanging in there and trying to survive a league that's constantly shifted around them. When they were known as Digital Chaos and had an all-Swedish roster in Season 7, to rebranding to Chaos Esports Club in Season 8, and every season after that still barely managing to stay above the relegation line time and time again. This team, under any iteration, never made it past 5th place in Pro League. Ever. To some extent, Chaos is a legend, managing to be present in the highest league in Europe for years, without ever finding major success. But, I think it's clear, 
we've progressed past the need for chaos. Rest in pepperoni. That is all from me. The European League will be over for this season at right around this point next week, so we can start doing full stage recaps again and begin preparation for the 6th November Major, which kicks off in just a few weeks' time. And for once, I can't wait to finally have a bit of a break from all this siege. Please, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube, all that stuff is that side of the screen. I forgot how I do my outros. Bye!